Welcome back to the Jongets Games playthrough for Hybris. At this point, we have played through the first round of the game in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description, or you can click the I up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I think it's likely that I made a mistake or two in this rather complicated game, and that will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and that will make this as accurate a playthrough viewing experience as possible. All right, let's jump back into the game. At this point, we are now starting the second round of the game, and the first thing that we have to do is the Divine Pillar phase. So we can look over to the Greatness track, and once again, we are at the front of it, so we get to choose a pillar first. So let's focus on the options, and in particular, let's see what the three that were not played in the first round to do. Well, the first one is Influence, and that says that you earn one victory point for every one of your technologies and cities, and then you also earn one point for every link between those technologies. Now, you also earn one Greatness and one Goodness, and then other players earn one point for every technology that they have played. Next up, there is Truce, and it says as an action, you can earn one Believer, and then you can make an Influence action in any city of your choice, even if you did not send your god to the mortal world. Down below, all of the other players will earn two Aegeus when that is played. The last of the new ones is Ambition, and for an action it says you earn one victory point, and then you gain three force in all combat that you do until the end of the action phase. So if we took this one, then we would likely try to go into combat several times. This also says that all other players will get to draw one card from their conflict deck once this is played. Well, I have to admit that I am definitely tempted to take Guidance as well as Symbolism and Indoctrination, but I also would like to take a Prayer, and I think Truce is pretty good. So let's go ahead and take this one, and we can gain the Prayer that's on top of it. After that, Hades can choose a Pillar. After considering these options, they want to go with Indoctrination. And lastly, Athena can go, and they've decided to grab Guidance again. Remember, they had this in the first round, and it now looks like they're taking it in the second. After that, we can add one prayer to every pillar that's remaining that does not already have a prayer on it, so that is just going to be symbolism. Next up, it's time for the planning phase. As you can see, we have three of these units to use with two prophets and a warrior, and we of course don't plan with Zeus. Now we have all of these tokens, and this is a bonus token we picked up, which we can plan underneath one of these and then decide where they go when we actually take that turn. Now, this is a good way to go somewhere that is currently locked out by having it in the unavailable spot. As you can see, the Olympus and the Moiras are currently in that area. Well, in this case, I think what we should do is head to the Underworld, the Forge, and the Mortal World, and let's have the Warrior head to the Mortal World while these two Prophets will go to the other locations. Now, one thing that we can do to try and remind ourselves to spend Aegeus when we deploy these units is we can take Aegeus right now and put it in front of them so that we can keep that in mind when we actually put them out. Now, obviously, you do not have to have the Aegeus in this moment. I'm simply going to do that as a reminder because we did happen to have enough. Now that everyone is done planning, we can move into the action phase, and we have the lowest number pillar, which is the two, so let's take the first action of the second round. So we have these four options to choose from, and I think let's start off with Zeus. Now the reason we are doing that is because we want to be able to do that influence action as part of the Divine Pillar, and we can use that to get the believers that we need in order to move this over to the factory. Now that means I think we are going to go here to the Forge with Zeus, and the bonus ability is going to move everything in the factory, which I certainly don't like. We are helping out uh, the Athena player by doing that, but still I think this is what we want to do for the turn. Now, after we do that, but before we actually do the build action, let's now perform the Divine Pillar card. So this says that we will gain a Believer, and then we can do an Influence action in any city of our choice. So we can put the Believer right here, and then I think let's do the Argos Influence action. That will give us two Goodness, and then we can take three more Believers. We could, of course, do this one to take another Blueprint, but right now we need those Believers. So our Goodness track will go up twice. And then we can add three Believers over here, so we now have four. At this point, both of our opponents will gain two Aegeus, which isn't great, but I still think this was worth it to us. So they can add those into their supplies. After that, we can now build. Now this is going to cost us three Believers and two Aegeus, so we can spend this Aegeus along with uh, that one right there. I know that we said this Prophet is going to go to the Forge as well, and we are going to the Forge now, but I think that's okay. We could go to the Forge later on to do a uh, Produce action to try and move this down that line faster. 
Either way, we can spend the two Aegeus and the three Believers. And that means we can take this from the workshop, flip it over, and put it into the first spot in the factory. The reason I wanted to rush to do this on our first action is because I suspect Hades will also want to do this, and I wanted to get into the factory before them. Next up, Athena can go with their pillar number three, and they are going to do an action with their god figure. And in this case, they are going to go to the mortal world and head over to Sparta. Now, they are going to do an influence action, so we can see they will gain zero goodness, but they can also take four believers, or they could draw one card from their conflict deck. In this case, they want the four believers, and then after that, they are going to do the Guidance Divine Pillar action. That says they can take a technology of their choice and put it into the first space of the factory if they can currently pay the cost. Once they look through their options, they want to go with Dematerialized Money, and that is going to cost two believers and two Aegeus, and they are indeed able to pay that now. So they can add this to the factory, and I am even more glad that we got in there on our first turn, because that is going to slide us down into the second spot of the factory. After that, each of their opponents will draw one trained conflict card from the Colosseum, so we will get this one, which is Backflow, and then Hades will draw that one. Alright, Hades can go, and they are going to start by heading out with Minos, their warrior, and they are going to go to the forge. So this will cost them one Aegeus. And then when they arrive, they will activate this bonus, which is going to slide everything in the factory once. This means a technology from one of their opponents has emerged from the factory, so Athena will gain this into one of their slots, and then Hades will get one victory point for pushing one of their opponent's technologies out. So they'll go up to five points. Next up, they are going to build, and that is going to be this Aegeus Turbine. Now that is going to cost them one Believer and four Aegeus, but they do have a discount of one on either of those. In this case, they are going to spend one Believer as well as three Aegeus, so the discount went towards the Aegeus, and then this can flip over and go onto the first spot of the factory. Alright, it's time for us to go again, and I think let's head over to the Underworld with our Prophet. So we can take one of these three options, and we are currently one goodness away from the top of the goodness track, and that last spot would unlock a spark. So I think let's go over here to increase our goodness, and then we are going to drain three Aegeus from Kronos. So we are now at the top of the goodness track, and we have the three Aegeus, one of which we are hoping to pay over here for Acus, our warrior. Alright, it's time for Athena to go, and they are going to play Bellerophon, their warrior, out into the mortal world. In this case, they want to go to Argos, and that is going to, first of all, put one prayer into the well. After that, they can influence or deploy in Argos, and for the first time in the game, they are going to deploy. So they can bring this technology from their player board and place it down into Argos. Next up, their opponents can try to challenge this technology deployment, and this is a warrior, so if a challenge happened, then we would have a fight. Now it looks like the Hades player does have three conflict cards in their hand, and they do have their god which they could deploy, but they've decided they don't want to do this. And we have just one card in our hand, so I don't think it makes sense for us either. So yeah, no challenges with this deployment. So Athena can move right onto Scoron. This is going to give them two victory points, which are the first two points for them in the game, and then they will take up to three prayer from the well, which is a possibility, considering there was six there at the start. Next up, they will take all of these rewards because they have maxed out their goodness track. So that means they will get one greatness, one victory point, one point for every technology linked to the one they just built, which is going to be zero. This will let them draw a card, and lastly, that lets them unlock a spark, and they'll go with this one, and that will fill that spot in, which will give them one bump on the goodness track. So they should have one more point, and they are going to swap with Hades for that one bump on the greatness track. And then they will get two more points because a social technology was deployed. So that brings them up to four, and then they will get one point for every connection to other technologies, but currently that is none. And after that, we can see that this matches the symbol of Argos right here, so that is going to give them another bonus point, bringing them to five. So that's all of the bonuses they get, and now we can see the text on this technology. It says that every time they earn goodness, which would exceed their maximum, they can draw a premonition card. Normally you don't get any benefits for exceeding the maximum, but now Athena does. Alright, it's now time for Hades to go, and they are going to use their Hades figure in order to go to Olympus. Now they are going to go onto this bonus, which is going to give them one Aegeus. And then after that they are going to take a blueprint. The one they want is in the social stack, and it is called Purification Ritual. That's going to cost them one Believer and three Aegeus, and the effect says that at the end of each round they will go up once on the Greatness track. 
So they have to add this into the first slot of the workshop. And now it's time for their indoctrination action on their Divine Pillar card. This says they can earn a Warrior or a Prophet, and they are going to take this Prophet off of the Cornucopia, and that will go face down into their reserve. In addition to that, they will get a bonus location token, and then all other players will gain one goodness, and they will each add one prayer into the well. So green goes up once, but unfortunately for us, we are already maxed out at the top. We should have noticed that the pillar card Hades had would give us a goodness when we took that bonus earlier, but we just have to deal with the decisions that we've made. Next up, each of us will add one prayer into the well. After that, Hades has decided they are going to play a premonition card, which says Divine Judgment. It says they have to be at the Olympus, which they are, and they have to lose two greatness. Well, they are currently at the back of the greatness track, so that means they are going to lose two victory points for this. But then as a reward, they are going to unlock one spark. Now, it looks like they have four options to choose from, but they are definitely going to go with the cornucopia because that will unlock this enhancement. Now, they can place this down here where they can gain one determination or one goodness, and they are already at the top of the goodness track, so they are certainly going to go with the determination. After that, they are going to gain one victory point, which will bring them up to four. Next up, we can see the effect of this enhancement, and it says that during an influence action, they gain two extra believers, and that happens even if they don't choose believers when they do an influence action. Remember, when they do choose believers, they lose one believer from their bad omen prophet, but now this comes into effect, and they can even take believers when doing the city civic actions like uh, taking blueprints or producing and whatnot. Uh, now, this would also give them one goodness, but they're currently maxed out on the track, so they will not get any benefit from that. This also means at this moment, they have unlocked two out of their six enhancements. All right, it's now our turn, and I am regretting choosing the forge. Uh, we can do that now, and I think we probably should, so we can put that over here. But I am wishing we had, in fact, uh, done something else with this location, because as you can see, when we go to the forge, that is going to cause all of these to move, which is nice for us. But then when we go to take a main action, we can't build because we didn't really plan accordingly here. And then when we produce as the other option, that is going to push this out and help both of our opponents. Now we are going to get one point for pushing out a technology that was not ours. But even so, I'm still not super happy with this. But um, I decided it was still worth doing instead of doing nothing. You are allowed to just not take an action with one of your figures, but, but I still think this is worth it. So we can take one point, bringing us to 12. After that, it is Athena's turn, and they are going to send their Prophet over to the Oracle. So they can choose one of these three benefits, and they will go with this one, which will give them a single prayer from the well. And then after that, they have decided to do the Omen action. Now this is going to cost them one Believer, and they did have that to spend. And then they are going to play a card from their hand. In this case, that is Powerful Blow, with a Fire Element symbol on it. So they can put that right over here, and now they can peek at the upcoming Primordial card. They can then put this back, and they also have to put a token down of their god on this conflict card to show that they will not suffer the effect of the wrath of the primordial when it is revealed. Alright, it's time for Hades to go, and their last uh, figure is going to go to the oracle with their prophet, so it looks like they had a similar line of thinking to Athena here. So they can come to the oracle, and they are going to go over here, which immediately gives them a believer, and then they will do the omen action, which will immediately use up that believer they just gained. Now they can discard a card, and this one shows water, and they can put a token on top of it, and now they can peek at the upcoming primordial card. Alright, that's finished up their turn. Alright, we can take our last action of the round, and we are going to head to the mortal world with our warrior. And I think let's go to Lemnos. Now that is going to add two prayer into the well, and then let's deploy our technology into Lemnos. We can put that right over here, and at this point, nobody is going to challenge us, so now we can take the benefits of this. Now, the first thing we will get is three victory points and three prayer from the well. So that brings us to 15 points total, and we have a nice lead going on on the track. We can also take this three prayer, which brings us up to five total, and that is enough to go to the Olympus in order to uh, unlock another one of the items from our board. After that, we can take the benefits of our goodness track, as you can see, that is going to be all of them, so we can lower this down to the bottom, and then we will get a goodness, a victory point. Uh, we will also get one point because the technology we just placed is linked to another technology. We can also draw a card, and then lastly, we can unlock a spark. In this case, let's unlock this one so that we are just one unlock away from bringing Heracles out. 
After that, we can take the one point for the goodness track and then another point from the goodness track because this technology is connected to one other. We can also get a point for trying to gain a greatness but being at the front of that track, so that will bring us to here. And now we can come back to this tile where we will get a point for the fact that it's connected to one other tile. Now this is also going to give Athena a point because that uh, connection helps them out as well. And if we owned both of these tiles, then we would have just gotten two points. So we go up to 19 and Athena will go up to six. At this point, let's take a look at the details of the technology that we just unlocked. This says that once per round, after sending a warrior or a prophet to a location, we can send back the location token to our reserve instead of putting it into the used location spot. So this keeps us more flexible to go to the same locations over and over again in each round. And then after that, we can play our expanded Fort Premonition. Now this says we have to be in Lemnos and we have to have built one of the architecture style uh, technologies into Lemnos. And then as a reward, we are going to unlock one spark and move the production in the factory once. Now, once again, that part of this is not super great for us because obviously we don't have any technology on the factory, but this will push an opponent's technology off, which will give us one more victory point. And I suppose points are good. So this is going to head over to Hades. We can take another victory point. And then we can unlock a spark, and I figure we'll pull this one off of the scepter. And then as a reward, we can get one goodness, or we could gain one determination. Well, it does seem like there can be a lot of benefits from big fights in this game, especially against some of those challenges. So let's go with the determination, bringing that up to four. All right, we have now finished the action round, so it's now time for the end of round phase. We can begin this off by having each player pull back all of their standees. And then we can bring all of the Divine Pillar cards back to the supply. After that, the factory will activate, although it looks like it is currently empty, so nothing is going to shift. And then down here at the quests, we will slide all of these over and discard the rightmost one. It looks like nobody decided to head over here in that second round of the game. Next up, our Dodona site effect will activate, and that will give us two victory points because we are indeed in the first place spot of the Greatness track. So that will bring us up to 22. And then each player can take back their unavailable locations and then move the used ones over. After that, we can check to see if a primordial arrives, and it does. So that is this primordial, which both of our opponents have seen already, and it is Uranus. Now that is the god of sky and spirit, and the wrath effect is only going to hit us because both of our opponents have an omen card down here. Now this says each concerned player chooses and defeats one of their warriors, and that warrior goes to the underworld. It also says that every player is going to discard cards from their hand down to a maximum of five. Well, at the moment, no one has more than five cards in their hand, but we are going to have our warrior be defeated. That is certainly unfortunate because we will have one less figure to use in the next round of the game. So they will go over to the underworld gate and then Oranos will cover up Kronos. So we can see when you do a drain action, you will now get four Aegeus instead of three. After our warrior was defeated, Hades is going to gain one prayer from their Elysian Fields Enhancement. So they can place that right here. Next up, each player can take back the cards that they played as omens, and these will go into their discard piles. Finally, the round marker will move over here, and we can now begin the third round of the game. So let's start things off with the Divine Pillar phase, and once again we are at the front of the Greatness track, so we can choose one of these options. Well, I think let's go with Symbolism. That will give us a prayer, and it will let us unlock a temple from our board. After that, Athena can choose, and they are going to go with Indoctrination. And finally, Hades can go, and they are going to take Ambition. So that is going to give them a prayer. As you can see, we only have two Prophets because our warrior is currently in the Underworld. So I think we should go to the Underworld, although we could go there with Zeus if we wanted to. Well, the Underworld is actually unavailable at the moment, but we could use this for one of our Prophets, or again, just go there with Zeus, and I think that might be our plan. After thinking through the options, I think let's go with the Olympus, and then also we can use this uh, bonus location token to keep us flexible. We could use that to go to the Olympus again, which is something I would kind of like to do, or we could go somewhere else once we reveal it. Now, we are going to need one Aegeus for each of these, and we don't have to pay them right now, but I'm just going to put these over here as a reminder to myself that we do have to pay them. Now that everyone has planned, we can start taking actions, and the action order is going to be Hades with four, then us with five, and then Athena with six. So Hades can start things off, 
and currently they don't have any Aegeus, so they have to start with their god figure. In this case, they want to head over to the Colosseum, and they are going to take one Aegeus as a bonus. After that, they are going to play their Divine Pillar card, which says they immediately earn one victory point, and they now have plus three force in all combats for the rest of this action phase. So one point will bring them to five, and then each of their opponents can draw the top card from their conflict decks. After that, they've decided to fight a hero, and they are going to be fighting Calypso. So they can pull out that card, and as you can see, Calypso has a base force of three, and then they will draw one card from the top of the conflict deck, and they will also get a bonus force for every air symbol on that card. So the top card can be drawn, and that has plus three, and it does not have any air along the top. This means Calypso is currently at a force of six, and now Hades can play cards from their hand. They currently have two, and they have a determination of three, and remember, in this combat, they have plus three force from their Divine Pillar card. So they are going to play this card, which says Blast, and it will cost two of their determination. And as a special effect, it says if the opponent plays a weapon conflict card, then you gain plus one more force. Obviously, that will only come into effect when you are fighting an opponent. And in this case, they are going to get four plus three, or seven force. So just like that, they have enough to win this combat, and that means as a reward, they will gain Calypso into their area. Now they can discard this card to their own pile, and this one will go to the Colosseum discard pile. So Calypso will go here, and their special effect says that Calypso does not have any assignment cost, so they will not have to pay Aegeus when they play Calypso out, and as you can see, Calypso is indeed a warrior-type figurine. All right, it's time for us to go, and let's begin by sending our Prophet over to the Olympus. Once we arrive, I think we should take an Aegeus as a benefit, and now I think let's do a prayer conversion. Now, we currently have six prayers, and I wish we had seven, because that way we could do a three and a four, but in this case, I think we will just go with a four, so we can keep two prayer for the future, and this will let us bring off a Prophet, a warrior, or a temple from our board. Well, we already know that our Divine Pillar will unlock a temple, so let's spend that four to unlock Heracles. So they are going to go into our reserve, and then we have officially unlocked this enhancement. So that is going to give us two victory points, which means we are expanding our lead even more up to 24. Uh, at this point, our opponents are pretty far behind us, but they do appear to have some plans up their sleeves. After that, let's look at this enhancement that we now have for the rest of the game. This says when the Heracles warrior fights, then they will gain two force in that combat. And then when you win a fight or a confrontation with Heracles, you get two Aegeus or two victory points. So we can slide this right over here. And we will hopefully be able to use Heracles in the next round of the game. The final thing we want to do on our turn is activate our technology, which says once per round after sending a warrior or a prophet out, we can bring that location token back into our reserve. So that means the Olympus can head right over here, and we can use it again next round if we want to. All right, Athena can go, and they are going to start by sending their warrior Bellerophon to the mortal world. In this case, they want to go to Argos, which will put a prayer over at the well, and then they are going to do an influence action. So they are going to gain two goodness, and then they would like to do the take a blueprint action that lets them put a tile over into the workshop. So that two goodness will bring them to the top of the track. And then they want to put a social technology out. In this case, that is going to be the value system. This costs three believers to be made. And it says that whenever you do a conversion of prayer on this chart, you will also gain one victory point. So they can add this right over here into the workshop, which means Hades is happy because they gained a discount when they want to build this. And then Athena can put this token down over here. All right, it's time for Hades to go again, and they are going to send this prophet over to the underworld, and they of course have to spend one Aegeus for this action. Once they arrive, they would like to take a single victory point as a bonus, and then they are going to drain four Aegeus from Uranus. So they can place that here, and that's finished out their turn. This means we can go, and I figure let's head to the underworld with Zeus. Once we arrive, I think let's take this bonus, which will give us one goodness, and then we are going to resurrect our warrior back into our reserve. 
So we have two warriors in reserve, and we are now up to the second spot on the goodness track. And now let's use our divine pillar, which lets us remove a temple and put it down onto a city that does not already have one of ours. Since this is our first temple, we can put this anywhere. And I figure let's go over here to Sparta, because this is the best spot on the board in order to gain more believers. After that, we can gain one point because we have unlocked the eagle enhancement. So that brings us up to 25. Now this says that after Zeus activates, we can perform a produce action in the factory. So that is potentially powerful if we are able to get more of these technology tiles over here. So far, we haven't really been focusing on that over the last few actions. So with this in mind, I think that will be a focus of the next round. The final thing that we have to do is have each of our opponents gain one premonition from this pillar card action. So they can each draw one from the top of the deck. All right, Athena can go, and they are going to place their god figure out, and they've decided to head to Lemnos. So that is going to add two prayers into the well, and then they are going to deploy a technology. So they are going to put that just like this, and at this point, their opponents could challenge. At the moment, the only one who could is Hades, because they do have an unplayed warrior, but they've decided not to challenge. So Athena starts by taking two points because this is a social style technology and they get this from their peace goddess special effect. After that, they will get one point because they are connected to one other technology. And then it looks like we will get a point because we are the ones connected to that technology. So that is definitely something that we like to see. Next up, they can take all of the bonuses from their goodness track. So that is going to be one greatness, one point, and then another point because their new technology is connected to one other one. They will also draw a card and they can remove one spark. In this case, they will remove one from Ulysses and they can put that down here, which will increase their determination by one. After that, they get the two points from the goodness track and they will also swap places with us on the greatness track, which is certainly something we don't like to see. After that, I just realized they didn't actually score the main bonuses for this tile. So that says they are going to get three victory points and three prayer. So the three points will bring them up to 14, and they can take three prayer out of the well. At this point, they are now going to play their divine pillar card because they did use their god. This says they can earn a warrior or a prophet from their enhancements, and then they can gain one bonus location token. In this case, they have decided to bring this prophet off, so that means they have unlocked the olive tree. Now this is going to give them three victory points immediately, which brings them up to 17. And now for the rest of the game, this says that when Athena is activated, they will take one prayer from the well and add that onto their board. Now they've already activated Athena this round, so they do not get the benefit right now, but they will in future rounds. Next up, each of their opponents will gain one goodness, and we will also put one prayer into the well. So we will gain one. And unfortunately for Hades, they will not gain one because they are still maxed out here. They've had this technology all around so far, and they have not actually placed it yet, and they're starting to feel like maybe that was a mistake. So those are all the benefits Athena gets with this placement, and we can now see that for the rest of the game, they get plus one goodness whenever they gain any goodness. All right, it's time for Hades to go, and they are going to send this prophet out to the mortal world, which is going to cost them an Aegeus, and they are going to go to Athens. Now that is going to put three prayer into the well, and I just realized that each of Athena's opponents also have to add one prayer to the well for their divine pillar, so these should be in there. Uh, fortunately, there is seven in there, so neither of the penalties have so far been hit. Next up, Hades is going to deploy their technology into Athens. In this case, they want to put it right over here, and at this point, uh, their opponents could challenge, but at the moment, none of their opponents have any available warriors or gods to try and do that. So there will be no challenge, and now Hades can take four victory points and three prayer from the well. And then they get another point because this is linked up to one other technology. So that brings them to 11, and the one that they linked to is green, which means the Athena player will also get a point. After that, we can see they have a maxed out goodness track, and in fact, this has been maxed out for quite some time. So they can lower this down here and they will gain one greatness, one point, another victory point because their new technology is connected to one other technology. They can also draw a card and then they can unlock one spark. After considering their options, they are going to pull this spark off. So they are just one warrior removal away from unlocking Orpheus. And that is going to give them a single victory point when they put it down into their track. So that point brings them to 12, and then they get two more points from the goodness track bonuses they had. So that means they go up to 14. 
After that, they gain one greatness, so suddenly we are at the bottom of this track. After that, we can see that Hades does have a temple in Athens, so that means they can take either one more victory point or one more prayer from the well. At this point, they want the prayer, so they can take that, and that's finished out their turn. All right, we can take our last action, and this prophet is going to cost an Aegeus, and then this bonus token says we can go to any location of our choice. Well, I think let's go out to the mortal world, and in particular, we'll go to Sparta. Now, we will do an influence action, and this will give us no goodness, and then we can either draw a card or take four believers. So I think we should take the four believers, and then we do have a temple here, so that means we can also take a goodness or another believer. In this case, I think let's just take the four believers from Sparta, and then we will take a goodness for the temple bonus. All right, Athena can take their last action of the round, and their prophet is going to go to the Olympus. When they arrive, they can choose one of these two spots, and they will go here, which will increase them on the greatness track. Well, they are currently at the top of that track, so they will get one point, and that's going to bring them up to 19. Next up, they are going to do a prayer conversion, and they have seven prayer to spend. This means they are going to unlock one spark, and then they will also unlock either a temple, a warrior, or a prophet. Well, after considering their options, they are going to unlock this spark, which has no bonus, and then they will unlock Ulysses, their warrior. So that means this enhancement is done, and they will get two victory points, which will bring them up to 21. And then this says that any fight where Athena or her heroes are involved, uh, they will draw one conflict card from the Colosseum. This is also going to give them a single bonus location disc right away. All right, Hades can now take the last action of the round with their warrior Minos, and they are going to go to the Moyers. In this case, they want to go onto this spot, which lets them draw two cards from the top of their conflict deck, and now they will try to complete a quest. In this case, they want to try and tame Cerebus. So they can focus down over here, and Cerebus is going to draw one card from the conflict deck, and they will gain plus one force for each of the fire icons on that card. Now, there are some restrictions. It looks like the Hades player has to reveal conflict cards from their hand that show at least one fire and at least one wind icon. They also have to discard one card before they fight. So Hades can reveal this card from their hand. It looks like it is a trained conflict card they drew, and it does have fire and wind. Now uh, we can draw the top card from the conflict deck, and that is going to be Great Strategist. Now this does not have any fire symbols, but it does say plus three force. So that means Hades needs to get to five plus three or eight force in order to tame Cerebus. They also have to discard a conflict card from their hand, and they'll go with this one. So Hades can now start the fight, and they are going to begin with Quick Shot. Now Hades currently has three determination, and this uses one of them. And as a bonus, they can draw a card from the top of their conflict deck and add that into their hand. At this point, they have two determination left, and they are currently doing one plus three, which is four force. So they need to get to at least four more force in order to win, and they are now going to play the card that they revealed earlier. So that has created a matching sword symbol right there for plus two force. This also has three force on it, so they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they needed eight, and a nine is certainly at least eight, so that is going to win the battle for them. This means they can discard these two conflict cards, and that one will go into the Colosseum discard pile. And then they can take their rewards. Over here, the Cerebus actually lets you do a free resurrect action, and that could be really powerful if you have a, a warrior over here in the underworld, but it looks like Hades did not, so they are not going to make use of that. Now they are also going to gain 5 victory points, which will bring them from 14 up to 19. And lastly, they can unlock one of their sparks. So they are going to remove this one, and that does not have a bonus for them. Well, we are all done with actions, so now we can do the end of round step, where every player can pull back their figurines. After that, we can return the Divine Pillar cards to the supply, and then the factory will produce, although it looks like no players put any technology on this during the round. Uh, there are a couple of technologies over here in the workshop, but everybody else has been focusing on some other things, and it would not surprise me if one or both of these make it onto the factory in the next round. After that, we can discard the rightmost quest and then slide the rest of them over. So this is a saga that says Master the Cretan Bull, and then this one is wrestling against Eurytion. 
Next up, we can all take back the tokens in our unavailable area and then slide the used ones over. As you can see, we don't actually have any because we used two tokens, one of which was a bonus and the other we were able to pull back because of our technology. Next up, we can check here to see if a primordial arrives and that's not going to happen until we get to the end of the next round. So that means the last thing that we have to do is slide this over and now we can begin the fourth round of the game. Well, we can start things off with the first phase, and before we even pick these pillars, it looks like Hades has an ability over here with the technology. This says they are going to earn one Aegeus plus one for every linked technology to this one, again at the start of the phase in the round. So we can see this is connected to one other technology, so they will gain two Aegeus right now. Alright, it looks like Athena can choose a Divine Pillar first, although I just realized that we forgot to put prayers down onto the non-picked pillar cards last round. So there should be one on Truce and one on Guidance. After considering these options, Athena is going to go with Truce, and that is also going to give them a prayer. Next up, Hades can choose, and they've decided to take Guidance. And finally, we can choose one of the remaining cards. Now, getting prayers is certainly a good thing, but I don't think we want to take Influence. It says we would get one point for every technology in Cities, and then another point for each link. And at the moment, we have one technology with two links. So that would give us three points, but then our opponents would get one point for each of their technologies. So it looks like Athena would get two and uh, Hades would get one. So that really doesn't seem like a good overall benefit. We would, of course, go before our opponents, but I still don't think that makes sense. Instead, I think let's take Symbolism so that we can easily place another one of our temples. After that, we can add a prayer to each of the unpicked pillars that does not already have one. All right, we can now move on to the planning phase, and it appears we have all eight of our location discs, and we also have five figurines overall. Now, we don't, uh, of course, plan with Zeus, so we are going to use four of these, and we currently only have one Aegeus, so if we want to use all four of these actions, we will have to pick up at least three more in this round. Fortunately, we can tell that Athena took Truce, which will give us two Aegeus when they play this, but we don't know how soon in the round they will end up using this action. Well, considering we are going to have a Fear Step and a new Primordial, I think let's have somebody go to the Oracle so that we don't suffer the Wrath penalty of that Primordial. I think we should also have Heracles head over to the Mortal World. Heracles fights really well, and we get a bonus when we win fights with Heracles, so perhaps we will defend with that or even try to attack somebody to get that extra benefit. Now, we also really need Aegeus, so I think we should send somebody over to the Underworld, and then we should also send somebody to the Forge because I am planning on getting a technology into the Forge, so we want somebody to go there to put it into the factory. All right, it looks like everyone is done planning, and now we can start taking actions. It looks like the order of actions will be Athena with two, then Hades with three, and then us with that five. So Athena can take the first action of the round. Well, currently they don't have any Aegeus, which means they can't afford to send any of their other people out, so they are going to send Athena over to the Underworld. Once they arrive, they will gain a goodness, and then they are going to drain Uranus in order to get four Aegeus. So they can put that here, and then our Persuasion effect is going to activate. That says whenever another player drains with their god or a warrior, we will gain an Aegeus. Now after that, Athena is going to activate their Truce action, which says they are going to earn one Believer, and then they can do an Influence action in any city of their choice. Well, it looks like they are going to do an Influence action in Argos, so that is going to give them two Goodness, and then they are going to take three Believers. So they can place these right over here, and I just realized they did not take their goodness bump from the Underworld location. So they should gain one goodness plus one, because remember, they have this uh, dematerialized money, which adds one whenever they gain goodness. So they go to here, and then they get two goodness from Argos, which brings them to there, plus another one from this, which means just like that, they are back at the top of their goodness track. Next up, each other player will gain two Aegeus. And I'm very happy to see that because we now have enough Aegeus to pay for all four of our workers. Of course, Hades will also get two Aegeus. And that has finished up Athena's turn. So Hades can go and they are going to send their god figure out. And with it, they are going to go to the forge. Now before they take this bonus, they are going to use their divine pillar card, which lets them take and pay for a technology and put it right onto the factory. In this case, they would like the solar Tholos, and that costs three Believers as well as two Aegeus. 
Now on the back, you can see that once this is built, it will let them send a warrior or a prophet for free. So it essentially saves one Aegeus. Now they can put this over into the factory. And of course they do have to spend the three believers and two Aegeus. And it looks like they can easily do that. So this will flip up right over there, and then they can do this bonus, which will slide everything in the factory over once. After that, they are now going to build, and they're going to build their purification ritual. Normally, this would cost one believer and three Aegeus, but they can apply this discount to the believer, so they just have to spend three Aegeus. It does look like they can do that, so now they can take this technology and put that onto the factory as well. So they successfully paid for two technologies this turn. Now they are getting a little bit ahead of themselves because they do have one more part of their Divine Pillar to activate, which says each of their opponents will gain one trained conflict card. So we will take this one, which is a reflection card, and then the Athena player will take that one. All right, it's time for us to go, and I think let's begin with this prophet, which wants to head over to the Underworld. At this moment, let's use our Illuminated Stoa, which lets us take this token and we can put it back into our supply instead of into the used area. So we can head over to the Underworld, and I think let's take a Victory Point, which will bump us up to 27, and then we can drain four Aegeus. We can put that right here, and that's finished up our turn. All right, Athena can go, and I just realized that on their last turn, they should have gained one prayer from the well when they activated their Athena figure. So we can fix that by placing this right over here, and now they have decided to head on over to the Oracle. Now that is going to cost them one Aegeus. So they can head over here, and they are going to take a prayer from the well as a bonus, and then they are going to do the omen side over here. Now they can put a card out, and that shows water and wind, and they also have to get rid of one believer, and now they can look at the primordial card. All right, that's finished up their turn. All right, Hades can go, and they have decided to head over to the Olympus with one of their prophets. Once they arrive, they are going to take an Aegeus as a bonus, and then they are going to convert some prayer. At the moment, they have seven prayer available, and they've decided to spend three of that to unlock a spark, and four of it to unlock a temple, prophet, or warrior. In this case, they are going to unlock Orpheus, and that means they will take two victory points immediately. So they've now tied the green player at 21, and now on the back, this says that whenever Orpheus moves into a city, Hades will get one victory point for every technology in that city, and Hades will immediately also get a bonus location token. So they can add that right over here. And of course, they did pay for a spark unlock, so they will remove this one and place that down here, which is going to give them one more determination. All right, it's time for us to go again, and let's send Heracles over to the mortal world. So we have a bunch of options to choose from, and unfortunately, we can't fight anyone because we know Heracles does a really good job of fighting. Uh, either way, I think let's head over here to Argos. That way, we can put one prayer into the pool, then we can take two uh, goodness as an influence action, and then we can take a blueprint with that other action right here. So we can take any of these technologies, and I think the one that we are looking for is called Training Center. Now that one is right over here, and you'll notice this one will cost us four believers and two Aegeus, and on the back it says that every time we do an influence action once this is built, we will draw a conflict card from our deck, and we will gain one believer. So we can add this over here into the workshop, and we can then put one of our tokens on top of it. All right, it's time for Athena to go, and they are going to send their profit over to the forge, and of course that is going to cost them one Aegeus. Once they arrive, that is going to push everything in the factory over once, and then they are going to build this value system. So that is going to cost them three believers minus one, or just two believers, and then they can flip this over and put it onto the factory. All right, it's time for Hades to go, and they are going to send Calypso out. They, of course, don't have to spend an Aegeus for them, and they are going to head over to the forge. This is a pretty busy location this round, and that means the factory is going to run once, which is going to give them this technology, and then with their main action, they will produce again, which will slide these over, and they have just unlocked their other technology. Well, we are next, and it looks like we are getting over to the forge just a little bit too late, which is a bummer. Uh, we are planning on going there with Acus, so I figure let's go ahead and do that. 
So we can put this token right over here. As soon as we arrive, that is going to give this technology over to Athena. But since we push down to a technology of an opponent, we will get one victory point for that, which will bring us up to 28. After that, we can build this training center. That is going to cost us four believers as well as two Aegeus. And then we can flip that over and put it onto the factory. All right, it's time for Athena to go, and they are going to send their warrior Bellerophon over to the Moiris. So that is going to cost one Aegeus. And then they've decided they would like to take a victory point instead of drawing two more cards. So that will bring them up to 22. After that, they want to complete a quest, and in particular, they are going to go into the Wrestle Against Uriton challenge. So they can look down here where Uriton has two force plus three from that one drawn card, and they gain one force from either earth or air elements, and there is one of those. So that is actually six force total that they need in order to win. Before moving on, Athena can look over here where it says, before any fight where Athena or one of her heroes are involved, they can draw one trained combat card from the Colosseum. So they can start fighting, and they have three determination. They are going to start by playing Quick Shot, which lets them draw a card from the top of their conflict deck. And after that, they will play Powerful Blow. So that is going to give them 2 plus 1 more force, so they are currently at 4, and they do have 1 Determination left to spend. In this case, they are going to play Amplification, and that does not cost any Determination, and it says the next Conflict card that they play has its cost reduced by 2. Now that did not increase their force at all, but it does let them play God's Grace, which is a Colosseum card they picked up for 1 Determination instead of 3. Now that gives them four force, so they are now up to eight, which is uh, definitely uh, six or more. And then this says they earn as much prayer as their current goodness level. Currently they have five goodness and there's only two prayer in the pool, so that means they can only take the two. They did think about trying to wait until they could get more from that later on, but they felt like it probably made sense to jump on this now. So they have won this challenge, and that means that they are going to gain two victory points and they can unlock one spark. This means they are up to 24 points, and the gap between us and our opponents has been drastically reduced. Next up, as I said, they can unlock one spark, so they will pull this one off from the Ajid, and that is going to go down here where they will get two more victory points. So they are up to 26, and then they've decided to play a Premonition card. They had three of them over here, and this one says Titanomancy. Now they have to be at the Moiris place, and they have to succeed at a confrontation, which they just did, and now they are going to gain two spots on the Greatness track. Well, they were already at the front of that track, so that means they are just going to get two points, and that means they have tied the game up with us at 28. Well, it's now time for Hades to go, and they are going to send out their warrior Minos to the Mortal World. They, of course, have to spend an Aegeus to do this. And then they can come out to the mortal world where they are going to head over to Athens. This means three prayer will be added over into the well. And then they are going to deploy a technology. In this case, they want to deploy their solar tholos right over here. Now that is going to make one link up here with one of their technologies. So right there, they will get one plus one or two points, which will bring them up to 23. And then they will get three more points for this technology. So that means they are up to 26, and then they can take three prayer, and there does happen to be three prayer in the well. Next up, they do have a temple in Athens, so they can take one of these two bonuses, and considering there's currently no prayer to take, they are going to take the extra victory point, which brings them up to 27. After that, they can take bonuses from their goodness track, and it seems like they did not actually do much good. <laughs> they are on the bottom spot, so they will just go up once on the greatness track. This means they will swap places with the green player. All right, it's now our turn, and I think let's head over to the Oracle with our Prophet. So we can look down here, and I think let's head onto this spot. Uh, once we land there, we will gain one goodness, which will bring us up to the top of that track. After that, we can spend one Believer in order to do the Omen action, and we have to discard a card from our hand that has a new element that is not water or air. Now, in this case, I think let's just discard this quick shot because that shows fire. And then we can peek at this primordial. This means we will not suffer the wrath effect, and that would have been uh, having us, oh wow, lose two prayer and one uh, mountain card and two points for each of our uh, build technologies and cities. That would have been awful. <laughs> I'm very glad that we went with this omen action. 
Uh, now, it does say that each player who has more than 7 Aegeus will lose the excess, but I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with that. All right, it's now time for Athena to take their last action of the round, and they are going to go to the Mortal World with Ulysses. Now, at the moment, there are three empty cities and two occupied cities, and they could try to go into one of these occupied cities, but they don't think that makes sense at the moment. Uh, the place they'd really like to go is Argos, but they are not at all convinced they would win us in a fight, considering we have Heracles over here, who already has a plus two to combat. So they have decided instead they're just going to head over here to Ellis. Once they arrive, four prayers will be put into the well. And then they have decided to deploy the value system technology right over here. Now that is going to give them one victory point, which will bring them up to 29, and it will let them take two prayer from the well. Next up, this is unfortunately not connected to any other technologies, so they won't get any bonuses for that. But they do have a fully maxed out goodness track, so this is still going to be pretty good for them. That means they will gain one greatness, one victory point, no points for links, they can then draw a card, and they can unlock one spark. So they are once again at the front of the greatness track, and then that point will bring them up to 30. Finally, the only spark they can currently unlock is this one here on the Parthenon. Well, it's time for Hades to go, and they are going to send their profit over to the Oracle, and you'll notice they don't currently have an Aegeus to pay for this. However, they do have a technology that says once per round they can send a profit or a warrior for free. So they will use this now, which lets them send out this profit. When they arrive over here, they will head onto this spot, which will give them a Believer, and then they will immediately spend that Believer along with this Conflict card in order to do an Omen. So they can peek at this, and this means none of the players are going to suffer the Wrath effect coming soon. Well, we can take the last action of the round with Zeus, and I think we should probably head over here to the Underworld. I know we've already come here once this round, but getting more Aegeus is a good thing. And that means we can draw one card from the top of our Conflict deck, and then we can drain four Aegeus. This means we now have six, which sets us up really well for taking actions in the next round. And then after that, the Eagle will activate, which says after Zeus's activation, we perform a Produce action. So we can slide all of the tiles on the factory once. Finally, we can use Symbolism, and that says we can place a temple into a city where we don't already have one. So let's grab this temple, and let's place it down here into Argos. After that, each of our opponents can draw a single Premonition card. And with that, we are now done with our turn, and everyone is done with their actions. So we can now go into the end of round phase, where everyone can take back their figures. And then we can reset the Divine Pillar cards. Next up, every technology in the factory will move forward once. And then we can discard the rightmost quest and shift the rest of them over. Next up, we can take unavailable tokens from that location spot and then shift all of the used locations over. And then it's time for the second primordial to arrive. So we can flip this over and everybody knows what this does already. Uh, none of us are going to be affected by that wrath because everyone did an omen action. And then anyone with more than seven Aegeus has to discard down to seven. And currently we have six, so we don't have to discard anything, but I guess that did get a little close. Next up, we can put the primordial Gaia down here into the underworld. And that means that drain actions will now make five Aegeus. Next up, each player can take back their played conflict cards for the omen. All right, let's now move the round marker over, and we are starting the fifth round of the game. Well, the first thing to happen in this new round is Hades can activate this technology. That gives them one Aegeus plus one for each connected technology to this, so that is going to be three Aegeus total. After that, we can look down here and see that Athena gets to choose a pillar card first. So they can take these, and now Athena can choose one of the Divine Pillar cards, although before we get to that, I just realized that they did not take their two victory points when this social technology came out. So that means Athena should actually be at 32 points. Now they can choose a pillar, and they want to go with Indoctrination. After that, Hades can choose, and they would like to take Truce, and now we can choose one of these. Now, we could take Ambition, which would give us a prayer, and that would make us much more potent in combat this round, or we could take Guidance in order to get another technology out into the factory. While getting an extra prayer does seem nice, I think let's go with Guidance instead. So, let's add a prayer down here onto Symbolism. And now it's time for everyone to plan. 
Now, at the moment, it looks like we have five of these location disks, and we have four figures that want to take one. This means one of these five won't be used this round, and we have the Olympus, the Moiris, the Colosseum, the Mortal World, and the Underworld as options. Out of all of these, I think we care about going to the Colosseum the least, so we can place that right over there, and then I figure we'll send our warriors to the Mortal World and the Moiris, and the Prophets can go to the Olympus and the Underworld. Alright, we are done planning, so now we can start taking actions, and the order of play will be Hades, then us, and then Athena. So, Hades can start things off, and in this case, they want to start by sending Orpheus out to the mortal world. So that is going to cost them one Aegeus, and remember, the ability for Orpheus says they will gain one victory point for every technology in the city that they go to with Orpheus. So, we are not surprised to see them go to Athens. This is going to put three prayers into the well, and then they are going to influence. Now, this means they are going to take two goodness, and then they can take either uh, two believers or one greatness. So that two goodness brings them up to here, and then they do uh, take one less believer, but then they also gain two more believers just for doing this. So no matter what, they are going to gain two believers. And then if they chose the two from the map, they would subtract one and take one, or again, they could go up on the greatness track. And it looks like that is what they want to do. So they are now back at the front of the Greatness track. Now, of course, Orpheus's ability will give them one point for every technology in Athens, and there are two of them. So that means Hades has now gone up to 29 points, and we are now in last place. We got a lot of points in the first few rounds of the game, but we have really stagnated over the last couple. All right, we can go, and I think let's start with Zeus. Now, we can obviously go to any location, and I think let's head over here to Sparta. Once we land on this spot, we can do an influence action, which will give us zero goodness, which is fine considering we are at the top of that track, and then we can take four believers, or we could draw a conflict card. Now, I think let's take the four believers, and then we do have a temple over here, so that will let us take a goodness or a believer, and again, we're at the top of that track, so that means we are going to take five believers total. So we can put these into our area, and now we should use Guidance. This says we can take any one technology and then put it to the front of the factory as long as we can pay for the costs. And I think let's go with a culture technology, and these are the ones that give bonus points at the end of the game. Now, I think let's go with digital lyric poetry. That will cost four believers and one Aegeus, and it says right over here that we will get six victory points if we have the most believers and profits accumulated. So we have to find that in the stack. And then we can pay for this, and obviously we have enough believers for that. We also have the Aegeus, and that can go here onto the factory along with one of our tokens. Next up, each of our opponents can take one trained card from the Colosseum. And then after that, we can use the Eagle. This says that after Zeus activates, we can perform a factory produce action. So that means both of these will slide down, and we can put this onto our board. Next up, Athena can go, and they currently don't have any Aegeus, so that means their only option is playing their god figure. Well, they're going to head over here to the Olympus, and this bonus is going to give them one Aegeus. After that, they are going to do Prayer Conversion, and in this case, they have eight prayer. So they are going to do two of the four prayer exchanges, so that means they can unlock two temples, priests, or warriors in any combination. Now they also have this technology, which gives them one victory point every time they convert with the chart. So that means they converted twice, which will give them two more points. So again, they can unlock two temples, priests, or warriors. And currently their priest and warrior are kind of locked back there. So in this case, they are going to bring off this temple and that one. And then they've decided to put one of those in Lemnos and the other will go to Argos. After that, they have cleared this enhancement, so that is going to give them four victory points, so they are now pulling into a pretty decent lead. After this, they can gain the ability of the Ajid. This says Athena can challenge even when she is already in a location or wounded back at her spot. Remember, challenging is when you uh, potentially fight an opponent when they put out a technology. So that means they could challenge with Athena once they've done an action. Now, this is also going to increase their determination by one, and they will unlock their the Ajid card, which will get added into their hand. So they have now unlocked three out of their six enhancements. After that, they can activate Indoctrination, which says they can earn a warrior or a prophet. 
Now, since they cleared that temple off, they can now bring this profit over into their reserve, and they are just one item away from unlocking their fourth enhancement. After that, each other player will gain one goodness and put one prayer into the well. So Hades goes up once, and unfortunately for us, we are already at the top of our track, so we don't gain any. Then each of us adds a prayer into the well, and it looks like there is now seven prayer in the well, so nobody takes this nine prayer penalty. Finally, Athena will take a bonus location token, and that's finished up their turn. All right, it's time for Hades to go, and they are going to send this prophet over to the underworld. Once they arrive, they would like to take one goodness, and then they are going to drain five Aegeus from Gaia. So that goodness will bring them to the top of their track. All right, we can go next, and I figure let's head over to the underworld with our prophet. Once we arrive, we can take a point, and then we can drain 5 Aegeus from Gaia. So that point brings us up to 29, and that's finished up our turn. Alright, Athena can go, and they are going to be heading over to the Underworld, which isn't too surprising, considering this is their last Aegeus. And in this case, they can draw one Conflict card from their deck, and then drain 5 Aegeus from Gaia. This means they are up to 6 Conflict cards in their hand, which is quite a lot. They are definitely considering fighting soon and then they can put the Aegeus over here. Alright, it's now time for Hades to go, and they are going to send Calypso to any location of their choice, and again, they don't have to pay any cost because that is Calypso's ability. Now they are going to go over here to Argos, which means they will add one prayer into the well. After that, they are going to deploy this technology into Argos, and now their opponents have a chance to challenge. Now we do this in player order, and we are next, and I think let's actually do this. We have Heracles, which makes us much more potent in combat, and it would be nice to steal the goodness track benefits that Hades was about to take. This does mean that we would not go to the Moyers, but we can just put this into our supply to potentially go on the next turn. So let's send out Heracles, and we can start the combat. This means both of us will take a stop and continue token, and we will now simultaneously choose our first card. Well, we have four determination, and Heracles already brings us two force, which is great. So when we look at these cards right here in our hand, it appears we unfortunately will not have any opportunities to get any bonuses from the weapons, because we have three of these with the back half of a divine bonus, and this one with just the regular weapons on it. So we have to choose one of these cards. In this case, I think let's go with Backflow, which costs one determination and gives us two force. This will bring us up to four force, and I think we want to continue. Now we are going to essentially hide these until our opponent has made their decision. After thinking through their options, they are going with continue, and they are going to play Stomping. So we are both playing continues, which means we can play another card, and this currently gives them three force, which means we are in the lead at the moment. We have four force because of the two that we get for Heracles, and our opponent also has four determination, so they have three more to spend if they want to. Well, we have three cards, and we are currently in the lead, so I think let's play Reflection. That has a force increase of zero, but it says if your opponent plays a Divine Conflict card this round, then we reduce the force of that card to zero, and our next card will cost one less determination. So we are effectively spending one determination on a bit of a gamble to try and nullify the force coming in from our opponent, and hopefully that'll work. So we are going to try and continue, and it looks like our opponent only has one more card, and that is Deus Ex Machina. Now that is divine, and they were holding back on this thinking it would win them the fight. That would have given them five force, but of course our reflection is going to mitigate that because it's divine, so that makes this five into a zero. So instead of bringing them up to eight, they are still at three, and they don't have any more cards left, so they are obviously going to be stopping. Uh, this means uh, we are still actually winning with four to the three of our opponents. This reflection really took apart their attack possibility here. And because of that, we are going to stop playing cards as well, and we are the winner. So all of these cards will be discarded. And then because Calypso was defeated, they will go into the Underworld. After that, Hades' Psycho Pump ability will activate. It says when a player loses a fight against another player, Hades gets two points. And then their Elysian Fields activates, which says whenever a warrior is defeated, they take one prayer. So they can take a prayer from the well, and then two points will bring them up to 31. Next up, we did win with Heracles, so we can take two Aegeus or two victory points. In this case, I think let's take the two points. 
After that, because we won this challenge, we can either take the three victory points, the two prayer, or all of the goodness rewards that Hades was going to take. In this case, I think let's take those goodness rewards because Hades did max out that track. So that means we are going to gain a goodness as well as a victory point. We will also get two more points because that new technology is linked up to two other technologies. We can then draw a card and we will unlock a spark. So the greatness will bring us up to here. And then as you can see, these are the two connected technologies, one with that path over there. So that means we will take the two points for the links and then another point from the goodness track. And then we can draw that conflict card and finally unlock a spark. Well, I think it would be a good idea to give us the option of bringing out a temple. So let's put this spark right over here where we don't actually get any bonus. After that, Hades can now take the other bonuses for this technology. So they are going to take three victory points, which ties them with us at 34. And then they can take two prayer from the well. And then after that, they will get linking bonuses. As you can see, this is linked up with two other technologies. So that is going to give them two points. One of those that is linked is theirs. So that is another point. And the other one is Athena's technology. So Athena will get a point for that. After this, the Peace Goddess effect for Athena will come into play because this is indeed a social type technology. So that means Athena will get two victory points. And finally, since this icon matches the one in Argos, that means Hades will get one more point for the match. Well, that's finished up Hades' turn. But at this point, I just realized that Athena should have picked up a prayer when they used their Athena figure because of their Olive Tree enhancement. Sorry for missing that, but we can put that right over there to fix it. All right, it's time for us to go, and let's send Achis over to the mortal world in order to develop this technology. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, the only way for us to link this up is to go to Athens, where we'd fight Hades, or over here in Sparta, which is realistically where we should have gone, because that matches up with that icon. Now, we are in Sparta, and we can't fight ourselves, so I am certainly regretting going over here with Zeus. That was probably a misplay. But uh, moving on, we, of course, have to place this down somewhere. Now, if we fought Orpheus, I do think we would win because currently Hades doesn't have any cards, but Hades also gets quite a few bonuses whenever anyone dies. So we'd actually be kind of helping them out, I suppose. So I think let's not worry about that. And instead, let's head over to Ilus. So this is going to put four prayers into the pool, and that brings it up to eight. So we are one away from inducing that penalty, and then we can deploy this over here. At this point, Athena could challenge this deployment. They have a couple of warriors available, and they also have the ability to challenge with their god figurine, even once they've used it because of their Aegeid enhancement. Unfortunately for us, it looks like that is what Athena wants to do. They figure they may as well because they've already played that figurine. Now, this is not good news at all for us. We do have four determination, but the cards that we have in our hand are relatively weak, and we can see that Athena has six cards in their hand, and they also have four determination. In addition to that, Athena's War Goddess effect will now come into play that says when Athena attacks or is attacked by another player, they draw a card from their conflict deck. So they actually have seven cards in their hand now. So I think for this round of combat, let's just put out Anticipation, which is not a very strong card, and we'll put the stop over here as well. Now Athena doesn't see this, and they've decided to play this card, and I continue. We're not too surprised to see that, and this one is Nike's Support. So that it gives them three force, and they can see that we have one force. And this also says they immediately earn two prayer from the well. So they can add this into their area, and now we have shown that we are stopping, so we are not putting any more cards in, and they are already winning, so they have decided not to add any more cards as well. So Athena is the victor, which means Achis is going to be knocked over here into the underworld. Once that happens, we know that Hades is going to take a prayer from the well for their Elysian Fields Enhancement, and they will also get two victory points for their Psychopump God ability. So Hades goes up to 40 points, and then Athena, as the winning challenger, can take one of the bonuses from us, and they've decided to take the four prayer, which is pretty devastating. We were definitely hoping to get that. So Athena will take all four of this, and then we will get two victory points, bringing us up to 36. And after that, we will gain all of these goodness track benefits. So that is going to be a greatness, plus a victory point, plus no points because that new technology was not linked to anything. We will also draw a card from our conflict deck, and we can unlock a spark. In this case, we only have one spark that is available to be unlocked, and that is going to bump our goodness track back up once. 
In addition to that, we can move up once on the greatness track and then take one point for the goodness track. Now we can score no points for linked technologies, and we also don't have a match over there. So that is it for this deployment. All right, it's time for Athena's turn, and they are going to send their prophet over to the Olympus. When they arrive, they would like to take one Aegeus as a bonus, and then they are going to do prayer conversions. In this case, they are back up to seven prayer, so they are going to remove one spark and one temple. Of course, they also get one point for each of these conversions, so that is two more points, which brings them up to 43. So they can remove this temple, and they've decided to put it down into Ellis. After that, they can remove this spark, which will give them one more determination, bringing them up to five, and now they have completed their fourth enhancement. This one is called the Little Owl, and it gives them one victory point, which brings them to 44. And then on the back, it says whenever a military-type technology is deployed, they gain one Aegeus and one point. Uh, so they are kind of bummed. They just unlocked this right after we deployed our military technology. Uh, either way, this is also going to give them a bonus location token, which they can add into their area. That's finished their turn, and they are now very close to finishing out their enhancements as well. Remember, if any player unlocks all of their enhancements, they win the game immediately, and they just have a warrior and two sparks left to remove. All right, it's time for Hades to go, and they are going to use their god figure in order to go to the factory. Now, before they perform this action, they are going to use Truce, which lets them earn one believer, and then they can do an influence action in any city of their choice. In this case, they are going to choose Argos, and they are going to take two goodness, and then do a single take a blueprint action. So they take two goodness right here, and then their cornucopia does give them two more believers every time they do an influence action. Next up, they can take a blueprint, and they want to look into the culture stack, and they have decided to play out this one, which costs two believers and two Aegeus, and would give them six points at the end of the game if they are the player with the most Aegeus. So they can place this over here into the workshop, and then each of their opponents will take two Aegeus. After that, there will be a produce bonus action, which slides this over here, and then they are going to build this, so they can spend two believers and two Aegeus, which will let them slide this over here and flip it over. All right, it's time for us to go. And we were planning on going to the Olympus to cash in all of the prayers that we had after we finished that technology. Unfortunately, Athena swooped in and stole those prayers. So if we wanted to, we could just not go to the Olympus, I suppose, or we could go there and try to do something else good with this turn. Well, we do have a lot of Aegeus, so I figure let's go for it. And let's also use our technology that says once per round, we can pull our location token back. And let's bring this one back to potentially use in the next round. So let's head over here, and I figure we'll go up once on the Greatness track, and we are at the front of the track. Again, it seems like we were at the back for a while, so in this case we will generate one victory point. Now I figure let's take a blueprint and let's look into the culture stack again. It's starting to look like uh, the game might end before we actually finish out the sixth round, so victory points might not be the way the game is won, but I think we should uh, work on this anyway while we also try to work on our unlocks. Well, I think let's take this one right here. It only costs two Aegeus to play, and it says you gain two victory points per unlocked enhancement at the end of the game if uh, we do have this one in play at that point. All right, it's time for Athena to go, and they are going to activate Ulysses, and they can go anywhere they want. In this case, they've decided to head to the Moyers to complete a quest. Now they are going to take a victory point, which brings them up to 45, and then they are going to attempt this challenge. So that is going to be three plus two plus one more for that flame matching up with the element, so they have to get to six or more force. Fortunately for them, they have five determination and a bunch of cards still in their hand. So they're going to start by playing Quick Shot, which lets them draw another card, and they are up to one force. And then after that, they will play Backflow. So that says if this card is revealed or discarded for any reason, you draw one card. In this case, they did reveal it, so they can draw another card into their hand, and they still have three determination, and currently they are up to three force. After that, they can play Stomping, which gives them three more force, and they now have six force, which matches the force of the challenge, and that means they are going to defeat it, so they can stop playing cards. This means those cards will go into their discard pile, and this will go back to the Coliseum. 
and then they will take three victory points, which brings them up to 48. After that, they can take another premonition card from the stack, and then they can unlock one spark from an enhancement. In this case, they can pull that spark back, and that will give them a goodness. And remember, they get plus one goodness every time they gain goodness because of that technology. So they will actually gain two goodness, and that's finished out their turn. This means Hades can go, and they are going to send this Prophet out to any location, and they are not going to spend the Aegeus because they can use this ability on their technology. In this case, they have decided to head over to the Underworld, and you'll notice it is already full up with these figures. So they can go up here, and they have a penalty where they are going to lose one Aegeus for doing this, and then they are going to resurrect Calypso. After that, they are going to reveal a premonition, and this says Rising Sticks. It says they have to be at the Underworld, and now they can sacrifice one of their warriors in order to unlock a spark and to gain one bonus location token. So they are going to do that with Minos here, and that means they can return the uh, disc that was underneath Minos back to their supply. After that, they can take a bonus action disc, and then they can unlock a spark. Now, that might seem like a strange turn, but the location token that they had going there was for a spot that no longer did them any good because one of their opponents got there first. So it seemed like a better way to use their actions, and having this for the next turn also seemed pretty good. Now, they are going to unlock this spark, which does not give them a bonus. And at this point, they have one, two, three, four, five, six more things to pull off their enhancements in order to unlock all of them. Well, Hades is done, and we have no more figures to place, so now Athena can take the last action of the round, and they can send Bellerophon to any location. In this case, they figure they will go to the Oracle, and they will take one prayer, and then they will do the Premonition action, which will give them a point and another Premonition card. So they can expand their lead even more, going to 49. Alright, we are done with actions, so now it's time for the end of Age Phase. Now, our Dodonocyte uh, enhancement is finally going to activate again after a couple rounds of not, and that's because we are at the front of the Greatness track. So, we will get two victory points, and then it looks like Hades will gain a Greatness from this technology, which puts them up to the front. After that, we can pull all of the figures back to our areas, except, of course, for the ones over in the Underworld. After that, we can bring the Divine Pillar cards back, and then the Factory will activate, which will slide this over, and we can take this technology. Next up, we can discard this quest and then shift these over and then reveal a couple new ones. Next up, we can take our unavailable location tokens and then slide the used ones over. After that, we can check to see if a primordial arrives and it does not. So finally, we can move this over to that slot here and now begin the sixth and final round of the game. Well, the first thing that happens is Hades can activate this technology here at the beginning of the round. So that is going to give them one plus one Aegeus for each connected technology. That is still two connected technologies, so that means Hades can take three Aegeus. After that, Hades can take one of the pillar cards, and they are going to take Symbolism. Next up, we can take one of these, and I feel like we kind of have to take Indoctrination. It's certainly not bad for us, and if we don't take it, then Athena will, and that would unlock one of their final two things that they're trying to unlock in order to try and win the game early. So we can put this right over here, and then Athena can choose one of these, and they are going to take Influence. Next up, we can all plan out our figures, and it looks like we have six tokens to choose from for these three figures. The ones that we don't have are One Mortal World and The Underworld. Well, we know that we want to deploy this technology, so let's do that with Heracles, so that if uh, somebody wants to challenge, at least we will have a plus two force in that fight, and maybe that plus two force will stop them from challenging. Next up, I think we should send a Prophet to the Olympus, and then let's do the Forge for the last one, because we do currently have a technology in the workshop. Now that everyone is done planning, we can move into the action phase, and the order of actions will be Athena with one, then Hades with the five, and then us with the six. So Athena can start things off, and they've decided to send a prophet over to the mortal world. Once they arrive, they are going to head over to Argos and then Influence. So this is going to give them two goodness, and then they are going to take three believers, and they also have a temple over here, so they can take another goodness or another believer. It looks like they've decided to take another believer, and then they can take the two goodness plus one from that technology. Now they are currently at the top, so normally they wouldn't get anything. 
but they do have this technology which says that they can now take a premonition because they tried to gain more goodness than they could. So they can draw a premonition, and then the final thing that happens is they do have to put one prayer into the well. All right, it's time for Hades to go, and they are going to send a prophet over to the oracle. Once they arrive, they are going to do this bonus, which will take the one prayer from the well and add it into their area. And then they are going to draw a premonition and take a victory point. So they go up to 41. All right, it's time for us to go, and I think let's send Heracles out to the mortal world. So let's come over here, and I think let's land in Athens, where we want to develop this technology. And we can put that right over here, and we do have to put three prayer into the well. After that, we can check to see if any opponents want to try and challenge us. And considering this is Heracles, who comes in with two extra force, it looks like our opponents have decided not to try. So we can take three victory points and three prayer. And then we will gain one point for that link, and Athena will also gain a point. After that, we will get a point because this technology matched up with Athens, so that brings us to 45. And then we can take our goodness benefits, which unfortunately is just these two, so that is a greatness bump and one more point. So we go up to 46, and we are once again at the front of the greatness track. All right, it's time for Athena to go again, and they are going to use their god figure and head out to the mortal world and specifically go to Ellis. Now this is going to put four prayer into the well, and then their olive tree enhancement will let them take one prayer back because they did activate Athena. Now after that, they are going to do an influence action, so this will give them three goodness, and then they are going to take two victory points. So they go up to 52, and then they are still at the top of their goodness track, so their technology will once again give them another premonition card. They have a whole bunch of these at this point. Next up, they can use this card right here, and it says they will earn one point for every technology they have, and one point for each connection. They will also gain a goodness, <laughs> which is going to give them yet another premonition, and then they will go up once on the greatness track. This means they are no longer at the back, and then they can see that they have one, two, three technologies, and they have one, two, three, four, five connections. So they will get eight points total, which brings them up to 60. After that, each other player will get one point for every technology they have. So that means we are going to get three points, and then Hades will also get three points. Hades can now take their turn, and they are going to start with their god figure, and they are going to head to the Moers. Now they are going to go here, which lets them draw two conflict cards. And then they will activate Symbolism, which lets them place a temple into a city where they don't already have one. So they can place this temple right here, and then each of their opponents will earn a Premonition card. So that means we get to this one, and it says Apollo's Temple. We have to be in Argos, and we have to have a temple in Argos in order to gain three greatness. So Hades will put their temple right over here. And then they are going to go on this saga, which is the resurrection of Alcestis. Now, the first thing it says is they have to own the divine pillar symbolism, and they do indeed have that. So that means they are going to gain two prayer from the well, and then they are going to discard a conflict card in order to move on to this one. Now, this says they have to send back one of their prophets from the oracle, and they do indeed have a prophet right here. So this will be sent back to their reserve, and they can take two Aegeus. After that, they can discard their other conflict card in order to go to this last step, which says they have to have a defeated warrior in the underworld. Well, that is the case because they sacrificed Minos for a premonition card in the last round. This means they have completed that step of the saga, which lets them unlock a spark. So they can bring this one off, which will increase their determination by one, and then they have finished the sharpened bident. So that is going to give them three victory points, which brings them up to 48. And then this says that during a fight, your opponent has minus one force, and they can now bring the Sharpened Biden card over here into their hand. Next up, they can take these rewards because they completed the saga, so that is going to be another spark, and they can bring this one over here, which will give them two victory points, which brings them to 49, and then this will give them three more points, which brings them up to 52. Finally, they will gain one greatness, which swaps them with Athena. After that, they are now going to reveal a premonition which says Altered Destiny. It says they have to be at Moira's place, which they are, and they have to complete a saga, which they did, so now they can take up to four prayer. 
Now, at the moment, there's just one prayer in the well, but it seems like Hades is okay with taking one instead of holding on to this for more later. Well, it's time for us to go, and I figure let's head over to the Olympus with our prophet. Once we arrive, let's go up on the greatness track, and we are already at the top, so that gives us one point. And then let's spend four prayer in order to do an unlock of a temple, a prophet, or a warrior. I was certainly hoping to have enough to do a couple of these unlocks, but again, Athena swooped in and stole some prayer from us in the last round. Well, let's unlock Amphion. So they're going to go over here, and then that is going to give us two victory points. And it also says that when you deploy a technology, you gain two victory points instead of one for each connection. Now, obviously, that would be much stronger earlier on in the game if we had pushed for it. So let's take those two points, which brings us to 52. All right, Athena can go, and they are going to send Ulysses over to the Moyers. Once they arrive, they will take one victory point, and then they want to go to this confrontation, which is the trap of the Aramanthian boar. Now, this is a special kind of conflict because it has zero force, and it just says they have to sacrifice five believers and one of their cards. In this case, they planned ahead so they can discard this and then get rid of these five believers, and then they will take the reward, which says they get one victory point, and they can unlock a spark. So they can pull this one off here, and this is not great timing for the Parthenon because it is going to give them one point, but then the backside says when you unlock this enhancement, you gain as many points as there are prayers in the well, and currently there are no prayers in the well. Uh, this also says at the beginning of the end of the age phase, you add as many prayer to the well as there are temples in Athens. So they can gain one point, and that's finished their turn. So now Hades can go, and they are going to send a prophet over to the Olympus. In this case, they will go here, which will put one prayer into the well, and then they are going to do conversions. Now it seems like they have been saving up because they have a whopping 12 of these prayers over here, so that means that they can do three of the conversions, which lets them unlock temples, prophets, or warriors. In this case, they will unlock Sisyphus first, which will give them two points. And this says, after deploying a technology with Sisyphus, you can reduce a player's goodness track down to zero and gain one goodness, and they also get a bonus location token. After that, they are going to unlock this prophet, and then lastly, they will unlock this temple, which means the Cunin will give them four points, so they're currently getting five, and then this says, during the action phase, Hades can move to an occupied slot. Also, Hades cannot be challenged when deploying technologies. So, Hades can take five points, which brings them up to 57, but that doesn't really matter, because at this moment, Hades has completed all six of their enhancement unlocks, and that means they immediately win the game, and we don't even have to check the victory points. Remember, if no player does this, then we would finish out the six rounds, and then the player with the most points would win, but with one player doing a complete unlock, they are simply the victor. And as you can see, Athena had one more item to unlock, and we had four up there, so overall, it was relatively close with Athena almost being able to do this as well. So once again, Hades is the winner, and that completes one full three-player game of Hybris. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, even though we didn't make it all the way to the end for final scoring. As I explained at the very start of the tutorial, this game can end by going through six full rounds, or it can end immediately if somebody has gotten all of their enhancements unlocked. As you can see, that is the way the game ended, and it seems like uh, multiple players were very close to making that happen, and I don't think we were one of those players. Um, I'm not quite sure how the victory points would have settled at the end if we had made it all the way to the end of the, uh, uh, the sixth round, um, but I do think we were in a pretty good spot. Uh, we had at least one of those victory point scoring endgame technologies that we could have deployed out there, and our score overall was pretty um, competitive to our opponents. I'm not saying we would have won if we had finished those six rounds, but it's possible. Now, uh, obviously, uh, we didn't get to that point because somebody uh, finished all their enhancements first, and that was definitely a focus of, uh, well, kind of all of the players. Like, I was definitely trying to have all of them try to get these enhancements done because they give a variety of special effects, which which are good. They also give you victory points, and if you make it to the end of the game, then obviously you want victory points, and then pushing a different victory condition that doesn't even need victory points also seemed like something to prioritize. So it seems like it worked out pretty well for one of the players, even though that did not end up being us, and I think at the end of the day, this did a pretty good job of showing how the game can play. Uh, in certain circumstances, I'm sure it's harder to get those enhancements out, in which case you go all the way to the end, and sometimes the threat of somebody uh, finishing up their enhancements will 
will cause you to have to switch gears away from making points to try and beat them to those enhancements. So yeah, I think that is going to wrap up all of my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.